A lot of theists seem to think that because John Lennox is an Oxford mathematician, he therefore isn't talking complete shit when he spouts religious nonsense. Here's proof that this is bullshit. because people have not been taught anything intelligent about God. Least of all by you. They're very interested in the origin of the universe. They're very interested in the big questions so far as they can be answered by science. But one of the results, I think, of the Enlightenment has been a reaction against formal religious structures. And you can understand that reaction because there was a lot of evil done in the name of God. What do you mean was? That's a confusion of thought. Because actually, if you mean by faith, faith in God, if you mean simply faith, which is trusting, faith is essential to science. Faith in a God, as it's defined in the Bible at least, is not simply trusting. The Bible explicitly defines faith as trusting without any reason to trust. In the 16th and 17th century, modern science started in Europe with Galileo, Kepler, Newton, all of whom believed in God. And their faith in God did not hinder their science, it was the motor that drove it. They had faith in God, in a rational intelligence, and that led them to believe, to have faith that they could do science. If belief in a God is essential to science, then how is it that atheist scientists are able to do it? You don't have to have any faith in some incorporeal rational intelligence to infer that the phenomena that science examines will be rationally intelligible. We see patterns that we seem to be able to describe and consistently predict with models. So we inductively infer from this that there are other patterns which we will seem to be able to describe and predict consistently with models. That's not faith. It certainly isn't faith that there is a God. You see, it's important to realize that science and faith are not two different categories. When doing science, it's essential that you understand that they are entirely two different categories. Faith in God and faith in science belong very closely together because I believe both of them are grounded in evidence. First of all, you don't need to have faith in science. By definition, science is about actually checking one's beliefs rather than having faith in them or even trusting them. Anything grounded in evidence is, by definition, not faith according to Hebrews 11.1. 1. The Bible says that faith is assurance about what we do not see. Faith is belief specifically and explicitly in that which is not evident. If I say, I believe X, I have faith in X, your next question ought to be, on what basis? If you say that you have faith in something, you are already telling me that you have no basis. And you see, it's very interesting. Every scientist is a believer. I, as a scientist, believe that science can be done. I believe the universe is rationally intelligible. Usually when someone says that they are a believer, they mean specifically that they have a faith belief, rather than meaning that they actually have a reason for their belief. There is a God behind it. I find the atheist solution actually is anti-scientific. Science hasn't buried God. That's, a, that's actually a false formulation. Many people like Dawkins and Hawking think that I as a Christian believe in that kind of God who disappears with the advance of science. But the Bible does not start with the words, in the beginning, God created the bits of the universe I don't understand. If your God didn't create the bits of the universe you don't understand, and a God is totally superfluous for explaining the bits we do understand, then a God is an epistemically useless concept. It starts with the words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the whole show. So my God does not disappear with the advance of science. Any practical meaning that the idea of a god could have does disappear with the advance of science. The predictive and practical utility of the idea does as well. Of course, science can't falsify the idea of a god because it isn't falsifiable, but it does render belief in a god totally and utterly pointless. 
atheism doesn't solve the problem. It does in a way intellectually. People say that's just the way the universe is and we have to face it. But it doesn't remove the suffering. It does remove all hope because by definition, atheism is a hopeless faith. Bullshit. Science has ameliorated some suffering, so there's no reason we can't infer that it is possible to eventually eliminate all suffering. There's nothing about atheism that is in any way contrary to that fact. Many of my atheist friends say to me, why doesn't God solve evil and pain? Well, atheism not only doesn't solve the problem, it removes it completely and it destroys the categories. Surely a good God could do this and that, and he could have made a world in which there was no evil. Of course he could, but we wouldn't be in it. Why not? Is he not omnipotent enough to put us there? One of the reasons I am a Christian, because atheism has no forgiveness, of course, and no ultimate justice. Argumentum ad consequentium. The genius of Christianity is that the acceptance does not come after the final judgment. It comes at the start because God has done something in Christ that deals with my central problem of guilt. How the fuck does somebody else being crucified deal with your guilt? I don't know if you've heard, but I do have a Patreon.